voters head to the polls in five states. We're talking about Michigan, Missouri, Kansas, Arizona, and Washington State. Voters there casting their ballots in some of the high stakes races we've been following for weeks now, and they're deciding on some pretty key issues. Joining me to put it all into perspective, Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, former mayor of Baltimore, also our contributor, and Sarah Isker, a former Trump administration official, one of our contributors as well. Stephanie, let's start with you. Let's start with Kansas. It's the first state to vote on abortion since Roe versus Wade was overturned. Let's talk about the impact of this vote on the region and for the country. I think the impact cannot be overstated. This is major for our country, for women's health, uh, for women's rights. And it's going to be a test of uh, the abortion rights uh, advocate. Uh, what we've seen is uh, those who, uh, who oppose abortion have been on a constant drumbeat for 40 years. And uh, they, have, they have, relatively uh, speaking, they have won this war. Uh, and now it's time for, to see if abortion rights uh, advocates can take it back. Uh, and uh, my hope is with the sign of early voting that we'll see that uh, the, the, the vast majority of uh, the, the voters in Kansas will, um, you know, vote down this amendment and make sure that abortion rights are protected uh, for the health, um, for the health of women across the country. This is very important. So, Sarah, how crucial is abortion for Republican voters now that Roe has been overturned compared to other issues? Where does this rank now? Well, that's really the question. I mean, we don't have a lot of data on this because everything we have before this was if Roe is overturned. So in some ways, this is the first real test. But politically, it's kind of a lose-lose for the pro-life movement. If they win this ballot initiative, paving the way to, to restrict abortions in Kansas, uh, most people will say Kansas is a pretty red state. It has a Democratic governor, but by and large, considered pretty conservative, heavily Republican. And if they lose this ballot initiative, it will, of course, add a lot of momentum to the pro-choice advocates and activists across the country and other races. Uh, so it's in some ways an odd decision politically to move forward with this ballot initiative right now. But absolutely, it's going to give us a lot of data, especially for voters. And, and those who turn out today are clearly those high active voters who want to have their voices heard on this question. So, Stephanie, the January 6 hearings are front and center in Arizona. You've got a Trump-backed candidate taking on another candidate backed by Mike Pence. And then you have Arizona House Speaker Rusty Bowers uh, telling us that he'll never support Donald Trump ever again. And remember, he testified during the January 6 hearing. So how have the hearings and Trump's election lies that are still being peddled playing in to the race? Arizona is going to be a test of that. Um, we see one candidate um, who will it, will 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 never accept the twenty the outcome of the twenty twenty election. She is a uh, election denier, uh, a Biden denier, uh, as as long as she has breath in her body. Uh, but the the challenge is, as you see with uh, former Vice President Pence uh, and his candidate. Um, He's trying to move forward. And I think the impact of these hearings, um, I keep saying it's like tr Trump's death by a thousand cuts because you're starting to see Pence uh, stick his head up much more aggressively. You're starting to see um, pretty conservative newspapers, uh, Murdoch controlled um, news um, media outlets um, going anti Trump, not featuring Trump, um, you know, pointing, you know, uh, propping up DeSantis. I think what we're seeing is the beginning of the very slow end of uh, a Trump. So, Sarah, we have to talk about Missouri, if you don't mind, as we wrap things up. A little confusion and absurdity after Trump endorsed Eric, just Eric, in the gubernatorial primary. Now, there are two Eric's running, but now both of them have claimed the endorsement. I mean, where do you even start here? In fact, one of the other candidates said that he's been endorsed, too, because what Donald Trump said was to pick between the Eric's and his name is going to be between them on the ballot. Uh, yeah, you know, reporting that we've seen shows that this wasn't an accident. The president intentionally, the former president, intentionally meant to endorse 
both Eric's to leave it ambiguous and up to voters of which one he meant to throw his support behind this part of a deal with Republicans uh, in Washington, Mitch McConnell and others who believe that Eric Greitens, the disgraced former governor, would cost Republicans this Senate seat. Eric Schmidt, the attorney general, is the other Eric on the ballot. Uh, they did not want Trump to throw his support behind someone who could cost Republicans again a Senate seat in Missouri. <laughs> Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, Sarah Isker, it's going to be very interesting to say the least from now until 2024. Thank you, ladies. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.